Well, here in Tucson, we are very rich when it comes to nature, history, culture. We have to make sure that besides the economic development strategy that we have been following as a city, we diversify that, st uh, that, that strategy. Um, our strengths should be where we work on, right? Our nature. Ecotourism is, Tucson is a destination for people that want to come in and, and visit our, um, our parks, our national forests. And so uh, history and culture, people know Tucson because of our arts and culture and the festivals and, and the, many, um, uh, the many opportunities to have a taste of what we are. We are a UNESCO city of gastronomy, so we have to make sure that we work on that. But we're also 45 minutes away from the border, and Mexico is our number one trading partner. And so what I'd like to do besides working on creating a small business incentive program, which we don't have, is also partner with, um, with Mexican companies and investors to make the city of Tucson their hub. And so uh, we have an, um, an incredible opportunity, opportunity because geographically we're located, connected to Mexico by rail, connected to, to the East Coast and the West Coast by interstates. And so um, we are, uh, we should be taking advantage of that. And as mayor, I will be working on that strategy plus what we already do. So. Um, that, that's how we boost our economy. Startups, um, locally owned small businesses, take advantage of what makes us so unique, nature, history, culture, our proximity to Mexico, encourage that investment from Mexican companies and Mexican investors here in the city of Tucson, and of course all the other economic uh, engines that we have in the city of Tucson, uh, like med medical, at Banner University would have uh, nationally recognized hospitals. Um, you know, we have DM, we have so much to take advantage of. We continue working on those and then bring other strategies up. Well, we need a long-term strategy for police and fire. We have to make sure that um, we start talking about expanding Proposition 101 with voters of the city of Tucson helped us pass a, a few years back. Um, so we have to talk about how we have a long-term funding source for police and fire. Um, we need to make sure that right now we have about 887 officers. We need to bring that up to 950 or so. Uh, we need to hire additional community service officers. That right now we have about 47, bring it up to 100. That plan is approved by Chief Magnus and it's also approved by the Tucson Police Officers Association. So we have opportunities to keep on um, hiring and managing and maintaining and retaining our public safety force. So. Uh, you know, I've, I've been a Tucson City Council member for 12 years and uh, I have developed relationships with our police and fire departments and uh, I will continue making sure that, um, that we have a safe and just city for, for Tucsonans. We continue investing, one, from our highway user revenue funds from both the state and the federal governments. Um, through the economic recession, the state kept a lot of our highway user revenue funds. Uh, the past two, three years, they've been returning much more um, funds into the city of Tucson, so we've been able to continue maintaining um, our roads. We passed a bond, a road bond, and a half cent sales tax that invested $100, $200 million in our roads. We need to continue investing from our general budget as well and find a long-term strategy, whether it's through the Regional Transportation Authority for uh, continued investing in our uh, and repaving our roads and our streets, um, or through the city of Tucson that we go at it alone and that we fund our transit and transportation system. Uh, but we do, I know how to get us there, but it will be a long-term strategy and it will take the community uh, to make the decision as to 
how we want to uh, fund our long-term long strategy uh, for road repair and complete streets in the city of Tucson. My position on 205 has been well reported on. Um, I am going to vote no on Prop 205, not because I don't believe in protecting each and every resident in the city of Tucson. As a matter of fact, the 12 years that I've been on the Tucson City Council, I have led on taking a position against SB 1070. I have led on um, creating the city as an immigrant welcoming city. I have led on uh, changing the Tucson Police Department general orders on how they treat immigrants in our city, protecting victims and, and witnesses of, of crime, protecting juveniles. Um, but the way that this pro proposition is written really puts the city of Tucson at financial risk. Uh, the governor has already threatened the city of Tucson that if, uh, if the citizens of Tucson pass this proposition, our state shared revenue is at risk. That's $125 million. Um, and the state legislature, a few legislators have already threatened the city of Tucson uh, by taking away our state shared revenue. Uh, more than that, I think that uh, the city of Tucson is not the problem. The city of Tucson, as a matter of fact, is one of the, the cities in Arizona that has the most protections for immigrants in our community. It is SB 1070 that is the culprit of the problem. And I will join with the initiative um, ri uh, writers, th those people that support that initiative, because it feels good, right? It feels good to say that the city of Tucson is a sanctuary city. Um, but practically speaking, it really could damage the budget of the city. I look forward to, when I'm mayor, I look forward to uh, passing legislation in the city of Tucson that will help protect every single resident of the city of Tucson, no matter of their status. And one of the ideas that I'm carrying with me is creating a municipal ID that will help people open checking accounts, that will help people uh, rent an apartment, that will help not only undocumented residents, but, um, but homeless uh, communities, um, previously incarcerated communities, trans communities, and so, um, that's what I plan to do, but unfortunately at this moment, I am not supportive of Prop 205.